This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high-quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, folks, here in Albuquerque, gonna check out Mama's Minerals. Been meaning to film here ever since I started the YouTube channel. Just never really got around to it. It's here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Beads, fossils, rocks, and more. I believe they do have like lapidary machines and stuff. You know, they cater to decor and stuff as well. So probably see a whole bunch of stuff we'd see at the gem shows and stuff, but I do believe they carry rough hand finished jewelry. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a rock shop. I think there used to be two Mama's Minerals. Uh, I remember one had like a room dedicated to lapidary equipment. I don't know if that one still exists. Definitely like retail. Uh, that's probably... No, it's not. It looks something very similar to what Village Originals sells. For a lot closer to $30. But, you know, retail rock shop. Gotta make a living. Albuquerque's pretty expensive. I always love the pirateized sand dollars. I've never seen him inside of like this basalt though. I think that's even even cooler. What are they going for? Oh, it doesn't doesn't say. This is pretty neat. Chloride, huh? <laughs> Easter just ended. I guess that would be cool to the rock living child. Some Easter eggs. This is cool. There's a lot of this style conglomerate of smoky quartz and um, Amazonite in Colorado coming out of Lake George. I don't know if this material is that material. I assume it's not. I wonder if Mr. Armando made this made this buffalo. These are cute. Nice for your desk. Little amethyst on the springy stand. Definitely from Uruguay. 
Just little broken off pieces. <laughs> these are cool, all of these from Thunder Bay. No, Super 7, Brazilian. Pretty close. A little bit different than um, Thunder Bay. I've been so blessed to have been given some really nice, big um, Trapetian Super 7 crystals from my good friends out of Brazil that I met in T uh, Tucson. I'll be slicing those up sometime soon and giving some away for those that uh, follow them on Instagram. Do you know all seven minerals in the Super 7? Citrine, amethyst, hematite, right? Cacaxanine? I don't know, smoky quartz. Some of the stuff they gave me to slice up look more like larger pieces like that. Actually, huh, quite a bit nicer than some of these, but these are beautiful as well. I've been seeing beads made out of Super 7 lately. It's really cool. Gothite. Lepid, dark, right? Rutile, smoky quartz, quartz. Quartz, smoky quartz, rutile, gothite, G O E T H I T E. Amethyst, cacaxonite. Lepida, lepidocrisite. Oh man, I wasn't even close. Here are some septarian nodules, most likely from Morocco. I like the septarianville septarian nodules out of Utah. Pretty affordable even at retail prices. Alright, so we'll just use the gimbal and look a little weird. I'm gonna suit anyway. MGK Magano Pink Calcite. Is this one of those materials from Zacatecas? I don't know. This is cool, that's rosy amethyst. A lot different than the lighter versions around the corner. <laughs> Some cool lapis. And Congolese Malachite. My very first gem show at uh, in Tucson that I vended with my grandma at the Kino Electric Sports Complex. My grandma kept saying, "Save your money. People will throw away stones at the end of the show." I'm like, "Yeah, right. I don't believe it." <laughs> Hung out till the very end of the show. Everybody packed up and tents were abandoned. We must have found 10 kilos of lapis, roughly this quality, if not a little bit better. Polished just like this on a table for free. Every piece had like slight little fracture or a little chip off of it and they just abandoned it. Or it was a tip for like the 10 people and the 10 people just weren't interested in it. So we scored, I cut that lapis for 
eight, nine years. Eventually sold the rest to my grandfather, who uses it now and then. There's no point in me selling anything to Mr. Medina. If he wants something, I just give it to him. And if I need it, he gives it back. Um, I don't know much about the finer polishings of lapis. I used to use diamond paste when I used to work it a lot. Not so much anymore. But when it comes to malachite, since it has a high metal content, I use a chrome oxide. And what's cool about chrome oxide is chrome oxide is actually green. So it gets, when you have like pores or something in the malachite, the green chrome oxide gets stuck inside of the stone. Like right there, that green, that's green compound from polishing the malachite. Chrome oxide polishes malachite the best, uh, in my experience. And it also looks good when it gets stuck, it looks natural. Um, if you can't find chrome oxide near you, you can order a compound commonly called ZAM. ZAM is often used for polishing turquoise. And it's what I found to be the best for polishing malachite. I assume a lot of this malachite's only worked till about 600 grit. Because you can see like a lot of waviness in there. And in some spots you can just see polished scratches. So uh, Zam does such a good job of polishing malachite that it only needs to be worked to about 600 grit. Really cool stuff. I love Congolese malachite. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out of China, but to me, most of the stuff from China is specimen grade. This stuff makes the better cabs. I like that, those two crusty obelisks on the side. This is a cool use of like malachite, azure, non cabable rough. They don't, even, they don't even have to be symmetrical and they look fantastic. Check this out, folks. This is that charite from Russia. Is it Siberia or is it from Russia? Is Siberia, Russia? Pretty expensive. Um, in the last like five, six years, I've been seeing the lower qualities of this skyrocket. Um, but I haven't been seeing like a lot of um, the higher qualities become any more scarce. Is it because it's just a gemstone renaissance and everything's getting more expensive? Maybe. Or is it that um, the lower quality is becoming less available? There's a nice big polished scratch there so you can tell this is a tumbled slab. Must have had a giant tumbler and just threw all the slabs that they were cutting. That, that right there tells a lot on how it was worked. Even in lower qualities, this char ride is pretty awesome. My grandmother likes it a lot. She had a super like triple A quality, large cabochon given to her from our friends in Russia. And that's somebody walked away with at her house. the Kino Electric Sports Complex, there was a gentleman selling bricks of this material, $50 a pound. Uh, same quality. But, this polish alone is worth 50 bucks, so this is a good price.
This video is brought to you in part by Cutting Edge Supply Company. Cutting Edge Supply is your one-stop shop for all things lapidary and jewelry making tools. Cutting Edge Supply Company has a wide selection of lapidary equipment, jewelry making tools, findings, gemstone rough, and much, much more. Cutting Edge Supply is a company ran by jewelers and lapidaries for jewelers and lapidaries. Check out Cutting Edge Supply. I love them and you will too. Make sure to use product code LAPIDARYDAVE in checkout to directly support the channel. Over here, looks like they have some higher end material, slightly higher end. Kapal with insects. Not to be mistaken with amber. I believe Kapal is just a um, an immature amber. Some Ethiopian opals. Are they hydrophane? Are they hydrophobic? I don't know. But they're pretty. I bought a bunch of this stuff that I'm pretty sure is hydrophobic, so it needs to be worked. Um, it needs to be worked dry, which isn't a big problem. You can pretty much just use your lapidary wheels dry. Let's see if this is open. It is not open, otherwise I'd show you those Aguas Calientes fire agates there. If anyone's interested in fire agates, I am selling fire agates for the Guzman family. Colum Columbianite, I believe this is something similar to what they call saffrodite, which I think is a pseudotectite. Here's some moldavite. A little piece like that's going for $20. I remember when I could get like this material for $6 a gram. Those pieces are going for $54.99 a piece. They're smaller than the time. Uh, if anyone's interested in any moldavite, I highly suggest checking out the Carp Company, K-A-R-P. They vend at the Denver show and the Tucson show. In Tucson, they're at the Tucson Convention Center, that three-day show. They just haven't turned the lights on. They'll and right uh, they get a great price. I mean, they get a great material for a great price. So, from horse to fine. Those are two hundred forty dollars each. Doing okay? Oh, fantastically! Okay. Can I see these aguas calientes? Sure. Those are cool. Those are two seventy. Here's Libyan glass. I believe this is also another pseudo tectite. There's a lot of cool stories on how it might have been made. Um, there's cool pieces made back in uh, the time of the pharaohs in like the shapes of scarabs and stuff. My grandfather loves to carve this material into scarabs. It cuts super duper easy. Um, one story on this material is that it might have been created during uh, a nuclear event back in ancient times. I think there's a story in the Bhagavad Gita or something like that in one of the Hindu writings that Krishna or his cousin or something got into a battle with their flying machines. Pretty cool. <laughs> Ancient nuclear weapons. I totally believe that nuclear power is a lot older than people think. Some Mexican appetites, those are cool. They're really affordable even here. What do you want to see? Oh, how you so doing? So they're in these bowls too. If we go around to the other side, I can pull them out for you. Okay. Some African citrines, natural, and beautiful pieces. Some Herkimer diamonds. The little black spots in the Herkimer diamond are actually carbon. And a lot of people don't know. This is a super cool book that I first saw at um, Taos Drum. 75 bucks for this book. Much like that really famous agate book. This one just is like a book of super nice, 
specimens of turquoise, some ancient history on turquoise. I read uh, while I was waiting for my grandma to talk drum business with Tal's drum, I read a really good story in this book about the history of lander turquoise and how it was like discovered by a little girl or something. I used to go like play on a hill, if my memory serves me right. Oh, look at this. Look at that. That's in Germany. And they lay on their bellies with their foot against this thing. Uh, and they use a big sandstone. That is so cool. I love this book. I'll probably buy it one day if it doesn't get donated to me or something. Or if I don't find it at like the thrift store. I'm sure there's hundreds of these floating around people's houses and towels. Really interesting. It's white buffalo. White buffalo turquoise is a magnesite from Tonopah, Nevada, owned by the Audisons. I could read this book over and over and over again. Nice nausea there. I'd ditch the squash blossoms, but I'd, I'd rock the nausea for sure. I got my nausea on today. This box. I was looking through it, and me and my cousin and Cecilia went um, oh, a couple weeks ago. We found it. It's another it's great, like great I nausea. Need to buy things. We were at the Gathering of Nations yesterday. I was looking for bench beads in the... Um, the only ones I liked were a little too small for me. Some other ones that I felt like really would have fit me were going for well over $3,000. I was looking to spend about 1200 not about three grand, but... Yeah, a lot of people don't know turquoise comes from all around the world and not just China and America, but it comes in in Russia, Mexico, uh, all over the place. India, Australia. Great book. If you've ever had the chance to buy it for a good price, you should. If you can rent it from the library, that's awesome. What a great book. A lot of stuff to see here. And Mama's Minerals. We're not going to look at everything. Oh, because a lot of it's really similar to stuff you'd find in Tucson. But I gotta say, out of all the rock shops in New Mexico, I think this is one of my favorites. Look at that fish. Some nice coral. Agatized coral from Florida, perhaps Tampa. It says, oh, I think that fish is from Brazil. I'm pretty sure those are from Florida. Some cool ammonites. Look at that one. Boom. And the fierce Amistar. You think they got really big, like as big as this whole building? I bet you they did. That is so great. Here's some topaz. Uh, those are starlights from uh, Taos. I bet you every single one of these are from Taos. Uh, I'm sure a lot of, oh, there's a nice big one back there that we can't really see. Um, I bet you people go find them and they bring them here to Mama's because they know they'll pay them something. If they're charging 60 for that piece, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even get 20. But that's business. It's nice to get paid for your hike. 
I hear pieces over 1.25 inches can go for over $100. Metalite. Laminated microbial deposits created by colonies of ancient cyanobacteria. Stromatolites are the earliest fossils, um, fossil evidence of life on Earth. 600 million years, really. Anyway, um, I love stromatolite. I like uh, conodolomite. It has a lot of stromatolite in it. That's a classic Michigan material. Kambaba is a stromatolite. These are cool. These urchins. It'd be cool to make a necklace out of those. Here's some Baltic amber. Love me some amber. Um, a lot of people don't know. But the best way to polish amber is not using a traditional water-cooled lapidary machine. You actually, it's kind of best to do it dry. I was talking to a gentleman in Tucson about polishing amber. He told me he's been polishing it for over 70 years. And in his experience, the best compound for doing your final polish after about, you know, 2000 grit of dry polishing is uh, Meguiar's Headlight Cleaner. It treats the amber like a plastic headlight cleaner, like a plastic headlight. Kind of melts the surface, you wipe it away, a little bit of pressure and a really clean rag and it leaves a water polish. I'll be making a video of that sometime soon. I've been saying that for five, six years now, but I will one day. These are cool. I see these being sold at Kino. Uh, African Butterstone from South Africa. I have a big chunk of this at my house that was given to me by my grandpa. Um, he was given it to him by somebody who thought he could sculpt it. They do sculpt it in Africa, but it's really hard. It looks really similar to some serpentine, but it's not. It's pretty tough. Cabs really nicely. It tumbles extremely fast. Like you can get a great polish tumbling it in about four or five days. imprisoned in the box there. Pretty cool stuff. $5. I think that's cheaper than I see them being sold in Tucson. That's really cool. Definitely worth five bucks. Every penny worth five bucks. This box is fantastic. Agatized Turritilla. Turritilla. I'm sure a lot of you folks know Turritilla agates. Um, Turritilla agate is like that slab of black agate with all of those little snails in it. Where this is just the snails. Actually, these are fantastic. They're just agate snails. It'd be cool to drill a hole through and make a necklace. I'm buying a couple of these at least. I didn't come here to buy anything, but that is great. Just a nice orange agate snail. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I don't hang out too often in Moroccan booths. I have my favorite friends in Tucson that I hang out with. Uh, I did just get a really nice Moroccan flag for my friend Sprite. And, uh, but I've never seen these. I'll be keeping a lookout. If you can get these by the pound, oh man, I'm gonna buy a bunch of them. I'm buying that. Super cool. Oh. Vanadinite is a lead crystal. 
magnetite. These are nice, cleaned native coppers. If I worked at this rock shop or any rock shop, I'd be making TikToks all day long. Then you get so big, you just sell them off on your downtime. TikTok's fun, but YouTube's more fun. For me. I do not think these are made by Armando and Son. These are probably foreign. Where there is a nice piece over there, I do believe is made by Armando. These septarians are pretty wild with the black crystals. The weird dye geode. If anyone has a dye geode and you want to get rid of the color, you can just leave it out in the sun and it totally bleaches the color out. I learned that from my good friend, Everybody Rocks, here on YouTube. Pretty cool. Look at this agate snail. I'm gonna buy that and make myself a necklace. Do you like agate snails? Cool sandstone. No, it's, is it sandstone? I don't know. I think it's a rhyolite, right? Here's some Utah um, selenite. What's fun to do with this stuff is you can like take a thick piece like that take a knife and split it right down the middle and you'll get two perfectly book matched pieces. There was a gentleman in uh, Tucson who was a miner of this material who was doing it for people and he gave me a nice demonstration. He also has a TikTok. I don't know what it's called. But if you type in Utah uh, selenite it probably comes up pretty easily. Na, 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 na. Impressive, but I think there were a lot scarier things in the ocean. There still is. And uh, big sharks. There's a great video of a lady um, using one of these, and her friends are like, "Oh, you're really good at it," and it just like explodes. It's a really quick video. I wish they kept filming a little bit longer. So we could see what happened to her, but it's cool. Uh, petrified wood bowl. Not too hard to make. You would use a um, diamond angle grinder. You don't even really need the uh, water driven ones, the ones that have water. You can use a hose. Some people aren't going to like to hear that, but you absolutely can. Um, the diamond pads for the angle grinders to do stuff like this are really, really affordable. I've never like found out which brands are good and which ones aren't like I have for traditional lapidary reels. Um, I should probably do that sometime if someone a lot smarter than me, like currently rock hounding, doesn't do it first on like which of those diamond pads are the best. If you don't know currently rock hounding, please go subscribe to that gentleman's channel. He is a much better YouTuber than me way smarter than me and has some great videos oreodont skull oh this is cool amethyst from veracruz mexico unmistakable look the veracruz variation of amethyst one of my absolute favorites nice gentle lavender color And that's a Herkimer diamond in the rough. Hiding right there. Oh. 
Over here they have some literature. It's like the kitty corner. The tarot's and stuff. Uh, the Book of Stones. Not bad. Seems like a pretty good one. I don't know this one. I kind of learned um, a lot of stuff that I know in the field and uh, from the internet. But a lot of people are asking me all the time, what book should I get for identification? What, is there an app? Is there a website? Really, you should use them all. Because if you're just going by color and general shape, you're gonna have a hard time. Especially if you use older books where after multiple printings, the colors change. This one looks really good, actually. Colors are really nice. There's Kunzite. Uh, I believe this was discovered at the Ocean View Mine in Paula Chief, California. We just came back from that mine. 30 bucks, that is cheap. Robert Simmons. Okay. All right. <laughs> crystal grids. Crystal healing for animals. Do you have an ornery hamster? I need some crystal healing. This is a kitty. Yeah, this is an, I love the old hand-drawn ones. Definitely not even close to being the best. Um, not even close to being the best for identification, but uh, they're just more fun for me. How much is that? Eight bucks, not bad. We'll probably buy that. Successful treasure hunting. It does happen, believe it or not, folks. Um, growing up, my very good friend, Anthony Dowdy, had a aunt whose boyfriend, Jay's father, that's a mouthful, discovered treasure in the treasure coast of Florida at the age of 13, didn't tell anybody until we they were completely done digging it all up. Um, I don't know how he cashed it in from there, but he became a very, very wealthy man. That's what's called the Treasure Coast. It's because there's so much treasure out there, and there's still there's still treasure out there today. Just gotta go find it. Rock Hounding, New Mexico. Uh, we should probably get this book. <laughs> Kayla um, actually has a book on uh, finding gemstones in her area. I wish there was a smaller version. Gotta get that, so we can go on more adventures. Websites are pretty much just as good, but there's not like a nice website that just shows off everything, you know? This little envelope of ghost towns and sites is really neat. I'm not into ghost hunting and stuff. You should leave those kinds of things alone if you're not there to help. That is. Cool literature section. Uh, I'm not gonna buy the Robert Simmons, but I will definitely buy the treasure book. Some beads. Rhodium over plastic. Some findings. I'm sure they have sterling findings. This, it's not bad. Um, it's kind of hard to find good bolo tips. Um, something like this on eBay, believe it or not, could go for like $9 each. I wonder if this bag cannot be a dollar. I think it is. Um, they were so expensive online and I didn't want to wait for Tucson that I was actually using 22 gauge bullet casings for uh, my bolo tips. 
got to buy one of these. I love making bolos. Uh, I don't really pull off bolos, but I have a, um, a lot of friends in the country western music business that I like to make jewelry for and mail to them. They use them in their photo shoots. And then I use their photos from the photo shoots to advertise my jewelry. So it's like a win. So I, I make a lot of bolos. The bullet casings are neat, but uh, not that, not that neat. Some Hubei chips. Carved pendants. These bone pendants are most likely made in Bali. They're so. This is definitely made in Bali. They are such master carvers over there. So good. So fast and so good. It's cool. Uh, red serpentine pendant. Very cool. Some Megalodon teeth. Um, I was actually recognized at the Denver Gym Show by a subscriber who let me film his awesome new product and it was kind of like I think it was uh, layers of dirt that they find megalodon teeth and other dinosaur bones in. But he was telling me that there was a movie, a B movie, I believe it is, uh, called The Meg. I haven't seen it, but after that movie, The Meg came out, kids were in love with megalodon teeth couldn't believe that the monster in that movie was real, if not still real, and that you could buy the teeth from them. And so it kind of went up in popularity and in price. I guess the Meg 2 already came out and they're making a third one and the gentleman was saying he can't wait for it to come out because it totally just blows up the Megalodon teeth scene. Here's some dinosaur bones. Uh, not my cup of tea. I have a lot of respect for it. And I gotta say, I love the way they look when they worked. Uh, Sweet Jim loves Dino Bone. He, he actually just recently cut a fantastic red piece. Uh, when I was at his house last, I like the reds and the blues. The deep, the bright yellows are my favorite. So I was wrong, folks. This is the one I've been to years ago, and they do have a lapidary section over here. They have rough for cutting and stuff, and it looks like they have a bunch of they have a big slab saw in there, a drill press in there, a couple flat laps. Um. I thought years ago that they actually taught like a class on lapidary here. I don't know if they still do or if that was ever a thing. But, um, yeah. I knew they used to be suppliers of Lortone. I see a Lortone tumbler here. This is essentially the same. This is the OG of what you would buy at a Harbor Freight. Uh, Harbor Freight definitely cloned this machine. Had a really good friend who um, made his own tattoo ink. And for one reason or another, I guess you have to tumble tattoo ink. And he offered me like a hundred of these barrels. I should have took them. His name is Dano. He recently passed away. This is Kingsley North. Wheels. Kingsley North is 
pretty cool stuff. I trust the hard wheels. I don't like their soft wheels. These are cool. They're like con, con, concave. Oh, these lights. Ooh, I do need a torch. Like a focus torch. I'm definitely gonna buy one. I'll try to buy something soon. Look at that. Is this like a joke? Oh, it is. <laughs> It's an advertisement. This thing is fantastic. All right, I gotta get a picture for the thumbnail. Be right back. So all in these shelves here, different cutting and cabbing rough. Break your own geode. That's always fun. A lot of the Moroccan material is pretty much just quartz. It's still fun for kids. I see uh, about pound bags of these are going for about ten dollars at the larger shows. Six fifty for a medium one. Amethyst geodes. Looks like they're all out. This looks more like a thunder egg than a geode. All gone. A grade lapis, dollar a gram. Uh, there's no like spray bottles to see color, but it looks pretty good. Hundred twenty dollars a pound. I would not call that a grade. But when when there is blue, it is pretty nice. To me, the high grade lapis isn't a traditional blue. It's what they call ultramarine. Uh, kind of like this color, maybe even darker than this. Ultramarine and everything else is not a grade. It's still nice. It's cool to have a place where you can get lapis all year round. Here in New Mexico. That just looks like snow white. Maybe somebody picked it up and put it back in the wrong place. Um, down here, the denim lapis. Is this, it's also from Afghanistan. Lighter blue, a lot lighter blue. $50 a pound. There's an old sign back there. for their old price. But that's irrelevant now. I've been hearing people say there's been lapises coming out of like Peru and Colorado and stuff. To me, lapis is like champagne. If it's not from Afghanistan, it's just a rock of similar chemical composition and growth that's colored by azurite. Some people think I'm wrong. But that's what I think. Rhyolite with borite. This is the rhyolite with borite they're talking about. 450 a pound. What is a serpentine going for? This looks really cool. It'd be fun to make some heishi beads out of this. She's a, use a nice big core bit and slice them all up. Then you put it on a guitar string so you can get some cool graduated heishi beads against the wheel. This is a cool stone. I wonder if it's also 450, which is why it's like in here. Oh, 14, 15. Yep, it is serpentine from Chihuahua. Ricolite. Ricolite's one of my most favorite stones. It's actually from Grant County, New Mexico, where I live in Taos. All the lapidaries get started on this in the local lapidolite. It's a serpentine with banded, like, bands of talc going through it. My grandfather has carved some amazing pieces out of this. I don't have a spray bottle to show you, but you can kind of see right here, and I'll put up a picture 
in post-production of what it looks like. I really like the light pale green Ricolite. Uh, I don't, I'm not a man of like crystal medicine so much. I do respect it. But um, one of the only pieces that I had to get rid of because it was making me feel so weird was a Ricolite pendant that I made. Love, love, love Ricolite. And this is a really good price. You can kind of see it there. Serpentine. Look at that fibrous asbestos. Cool. Classic New Mexican lapidary material there. Orange alabaster from Utah. Grandfather sculpts this stuff pretty, pretty often. Uh, he has a nice mask in his living room that I showcased in the video that um, I was kind of showing off his stuff in. Pretty cool. Nice and soft. Um, what's cool about alabaster is it works so fast. And that's uh, just a lot more Ricolite down there. Ooh. Some white alabaster for sculptor. Sculpture. This is kind of classic. Um, sometimes this material can have like these black, like spider webby looking dendritic stuff going through it. And so it can look really similar to the horsehair pottery that a lot of uh, the New Mexican native artists do, um, work. This is pretty different. A bit more alabaster, the translucent orange. A little bit greasy from the slab saw. Blue Chrysocola. 30 cents a gram, 105 a pound. Not a bad deal if it's stabilized. If it can be cut, that is a pretty good deal. I'd hate to buy a pound just to find out that it can't be cut. But it does look pretty rock solid. Pretty soft, but still pretty solid. A lot of the chrysocolla that I buy comes from Peru. I wonder if this is from Peru. These are probably a great money maker. For the shop here. I see this material go for between, oh, a dollar and four dollars a pound. I do like rose quartz a lot, but there's no real point of making cabochons out of it, unless you have clientele that want things made by you, more than like quality cabs at an affordable price. Because rose quartz, like especially the Brazilian material, is, um, definitely one of those materials that you can buy a very large capuchon polished really nicely for a dollar. In this turquoise, one dollar a gram. Half pound minimum, 120 a pound. Not bad at all. Campitas. This doesn't look like Campitas. But um, I did recently find out that Campitos does have a few different variations. That's kind of nice. Uh, it might be really hard for you to understand if you don't know turquoise, but the brown isn't a problem. It's going to be green under there, and it is stabilized. You can see the glue. Let me see. Let me see if I can get a better look at it. Those shiny spots are um, resin. So, uh, yeah, all of that's gonna be the cool outside matrix and such. Here's a little piece. Uh, kinda does look like Campitos, actually. This does. This is a great piece. I wonder why I kinda got looked through. I imagine somebody just picked through this, got all the pieces they want. 
like they you know pick all the good stuff out this is also a good one Manshan Manshan um, Manshan turquoise is also called redskin turquoise you've heard me say it a bunch of times that it's kind of a derogatory term out here in the southwest for Native American peoples so uh, you see a lot more people going with the old name Monchon. $100 a pound is not bad. I used to buy this material for $75 a pound from the unconventional lapidarist. Uh, he has raised his price lately to over 100 I think it's like 120 or something. And uh, so this is not a bad deal for $100 a pound. Not so much of the red on this stuff. There's a fantastic artist that works for Sunwest Silver named Michael Torino or Torano, Torino, Torino or something. Uh, and he's like the turquoise guru and he kind of educated a lot of people recently on Monchon and Redskin. He educates me like in every post he does on turquoise. That dude is brilliant. He used to have a YouTube channel, but he doesn't do it anymore. Not as much. These are great. This is probably, oh. Uh, this is probably 15 grams. $15. Not bad. What'd you get? Let me see. Oh, yeah, we'll take a look at them here a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Little turquoise goddess. Mm -hmm. How much is this? Um, twelve dollars. Not bad. It's real turquoise. Where this is not real coral. Mediterranean coral. It is real coral, but it's what they call um, bamboo coral, and it's traditionally white. And then they dye it. Cool. What are they calling this? Lavender quartz. Yeah. So lavender quartz. There's a huge. Let me see this. If you guys watch my 2021, I believe Tucson video, there's a whole bunch of. Uh, Vendor selling this outside of the Red Lion Suites. And I'm pretty sure it's tumbled glass. Oh, I like there it. is supposedly out of France really a lavender quartz. Um and I saw it like being sold at a very reputable vendor as facet rough. I don't know. Let me know. Does anybody know more about this lavender quartz? That looks just like a purple version of... That looks like a purple version of opalite. The modern opalite, like the glass. Obsidian from Mexico. Kind of hard to buy obsidian in New Mexico when you can go out and get an unlimited supply, but you can't find stuff like this, like the gold chain everywhere here in New Mexico. I'm sure there's deposits of it out there. The gold is worth buying. Um, but then again, it's kind of one of those materials. It's if, if people want to buy it because you, because you made it, it's totally worth it. But um, the Mexican artists kind of just have the lockdown on it, on it. You know, you can buy cabs for a dollar or two, three. Perfect cabochons where uh, you know, you're gonna be spending some money to try to compete with that. Red and black marble, pretty cool. Petrified wood down here. Always a blast. I don't know when this video's coming out, but we, uh, me and Sweet Jim and Sandy are gonna stop by his property and go get some petrified wood from his land in Arizona. I'm actually um, heading back out to California in a couple weeks. Green Opal. I believe this is Brazilian. Good price, $1.90, oh, each. $12 a pound, my bad. Still fun. Still fun. I like the dirty ones. You know, again, it is a retail shop. People got bills to pay, and this store does not look very, it looks like it's a, this storefront looks like it costs quite a bit. He 
here's the spray bottle I've been looking for. Here's some more turquoise. This kind of looks like, um, kind of looks like Manasseh. Actually, I can smell from here. I don't think it's turquoise. It's like a Crystal Cola. That Crystal Cola is a distinct smell. It's definitely not even close to being the best way to tell, but now that I can smell it, I think get closer, I can definitely tell that it is not turquoise. So knowing the smell definitely helps. Denim's really pretty. Uh, lapis, 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 mixed slabs. Let's take a look at the mixed slabs and see if we can identify any of them. All right, first up. Looks like it's granite from a countertop. Uh, this here is a piece of that alabaster that was down there. This kind of looks like um, a colorless piece of Hawaii, but I don't really think it is. Obsidian, nib, little niblet for Two bucks. Some wood. This looks like petrified wood, but it's actually pretty colorful and pretty. Almost looks like a coral. Or, uh, almost looks like some Katy material I see out in California. This is, um, the end of some cellular grain of dinosaur bone. Right there's the dino, the rest is whatever else, but it's cute. This place is so cool. It's so close. I mean, it's a two and a half hour drive from where I live in Taos. It's totally worth it. Some serpentine. This kind of looks like some uh, the Picasso Jasper. Don't know what if it is really. Kind of looks a little pick through. All right, before we go any further, I want to go back to the Ricolite. And show you folks the, the Ricolite now that I have a spray bottle right here. All right. Uh, let's see. Mm, I don't see any pieces that kind of exposed enough to where we can see cool banding. But um, a lot of you folks have been asking me about the Ricolite, um, the piece that I got from the Diamond Pacific Rock Yard. Um, I can't just go out there and find it because everything's hidden amongst the barrels, but you can always call Mama's Minerals. They obviously have a good connection. Maybe that will work. Kinda. One of the best we've seen so far. Serpentine with talc banding.
pretty cool, mate. Here's another piece. And actually, believe it or not, this is another piece. $15 a pound, this is probably, oh, 45 pounds, 45 dollars, excuse me. Salty stuff, you guys like salt? More wood. Ocean Jasper. Ocean Jasper is a material that was named by Eugene Mueller. Oh, there's a cool story about the material. He he sold a bunch of the material and he only had like a couple days to name the material and he named the material Ocean Jasper, which in my opinion is kind of a weak name for how cool it is. Shortly after, he found a material called Ocean, which is called Ocean Wave now, and he wished he gave this material the name Ocean Wave, and he named that something else. I talk to him every year at the Tucson, Quartzsite, and Denver shows. So I, I did confirm that story. And this is kind of like tumbling rough. This is a cool one. We have carnelian in Europe now too, which is part of the water. Known for the orbicular growthy things. Probably could cap this, but you're gonna get some bugs, which I totally like in my pieces. Especially when it comes to making like pendants. What do they want for that? Eleven dollars a pound. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Some honey calcite. Oh no, it's septarian. One dollar a piece. Eight dollars a pound. Easy to mistake as calcite because it is calcite. Dragon egg. Some people call it. Um, down here, doesn't say, but we'll find out quick. It's turquoise. Stabilized turquoise. Is it more Campidos? Is it, uh, kind of looks like Kingman. Like green Kingman. Unfortunately, no price. I think I got a lot of it. Looks like about 15 pounds or more. Yeah, this is in Campidos. It says something else, but it's cool. I, I, I can only cut so much Campidos. Rough Labradorite. Um, unless you're buying really large pieces of Labradorite, it's kind of not really a stone worth... Um, buying pieces to cab yourself. Cabochons can be had really nice, really nice designer shaped cabs can be had for about a dollar or two if you buy enough. And um, the flash will be perfect straight up and down to the viewer. Where, you know, if you buy small, you know, it's usually not flashy straight up and down. Like here, the flash is on this little side of that axis there. So I'd have to cut that way. And uh, you really want to buy a big piece, hunt the flash, then slab from there. Uh, little pieces aren't really the best for um, cabbing, but if you're just into having it as for medicine or for collecting or whatever, it's pretty cool. That's a cool piece of amethyst there. I like that one. And they got little sledges. Oops. Oh, just my luck. This is cool. Peridot bomb. Is it from the Peridot dream mine? <laughs> yeah. I don't know.
And there's a bunch of little sand down here. Hey, that there's a beach in Hawaii with paradise sand. It's kind of just for looks. You definitely don't cut that. Yellow Jasper. Six dollars a pound. Desert Jasper. Pretty colorful and fun. Twelve dollars a pound. Brazilian agate. Always cool. When you slice the pieces super duper thin, much like Montana, uh, sometimes you can get iris. A uh, calved piece of iris goes for several times more than just a regular cab. Lots of quartz in these pieces. I like that little piece of green right there. So you folks see this and you're like, that can't be emerald for $15 a pound. Sure it can. This emerald is from Brazil. Um, yeah, and sometimes you can see the rods right up in there. Let's see if we can't find a piece. Right there. It's a nice emerald rod at the end. It's definitely, you know, it's cabin grade, specimen grade. You can't like facet this or anything. My favorite stuff um, that they make out of this Brazilian emerald cabin grade material are like the horse sculptures. Uh, I used to get pieces, I used to get a, like a kilo for $90. It was a lot better quality than this. From Miss Kim at the Tucson show. And they would be have a lot of green inside of them and I would just make emerald and matrix pendants. Sell them for like 200 bucks. Here's shungite, really chalky. Um, the shungite that people use for like medicine and stuff is what they call elite, and it kind of looks more like silicon than this stuff. What happened? Okay. This quality is uh, not the type you put in your water. My friend Jordan Black told me a story that there was a, like a battle a long time ago in tribal days uh, on two sides of like a lake or a pond and they had to drink the water. One side uh, purified their water with shungite and the other side didn't. The other side got sick and the side that purified their water with shungite did not. Um, it's not unbelievable. I mean, we to this day, we purify our water with, you know, what? Charcoal? And other minerals. Or good calcite. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who message me asking me to identify stuff for them, and a lot of them think they find meteorites, and it ends up being hematite. And you can tell them, and they don't want to believe you. I was at the Gorge Bridge not too long ago in Taos, and there was a gentleman selling some rocks. He was calling meteorite. It's not my business what he calls his stuff. But um, it wasn't even hematite. It was just some other stuff. Indian serpentine kind of looks similar to the ricolite that they sell around the corner here. A little bit harder, a little bit more stable. Some cool smoky quartz, definitely Brazilian. You could cab and facet this. I like the dark, dark, dark. Wow. 
That's a sweet piece. That would make something great. I almost thought it was a piece of retail. A lot of people think retail is expensive. I've been finding um, a lot of vendors in Tucson selling it for about good stuff for about 200 to 250 a pound. I mean, a, ki a pound or a kilo, depending. Um, one gentleman was selling slightly lower quality for $50 a kilo, but you had to buy three kilos. There's just some random, random chiplets. Assorted stones. This is uh, appetite. I love the way it looks. And the raw doesn't like to be cut very much. I wonder if um, the really nice beads and stuff that I see being made out of appetite, I wonder if they're stabilized. I also know that there's a facet create appetite too. But uh, I've never seen it like rough for sale, you know? All of this here, minus the petrified wood, is all for carving. Gold pans, classifiers. Oh, I forgot what they call these. Snooze bottles or something like that. Some little gold bottles there. Pretty cool. Very cool. Here's some nice Native American or Native American inspired jewelry. There's some of that ribbon turquoise we were talking about in a recent video. Uh, you get a lot of that at Atonapal, Nevada. Not all of it is Royston. But, uh, yeah, this spiny oyster shell and the turquoise conglomerate, that material sells like hotcakes. This is definitely Royston. Very, very traditional ribbon. Uh, yeah. Great, great stuff. It is stabilized, but it's, it sells great. That is a really nice little blade of Argentinian Roto Crosset. These pendants are going for 25 bucks each. Not a bad price. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Kingman. Kingman's probably the most well-known American turquoise. It comes in tons of variation. This graduated um, organic hishi. It's Kingman as well. Kingman can be as green as this uh, necklace here. It can be as blue as these right there. Tons of variation in every mind. Finding everything okay? Oh, oh yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm loving it. Oh, good um, What? Are, are, are these made by local artists or are they just from all over the place? Uh, most of them are local. That is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering because uh, I see a lot of the Royston turquoise. I didn't know if the artists yeah. were from Nevada, but I'm sure yeah. if the native cats here want it, they'll get yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, it's yeah. stunning. Well, there's some nice things there, so. yeah. I love your store. Ah, uh, good. I'm glad. Enjoy. I don't know how long Mama's Minerals has been around, but they've been here longer than I have in New Mexico, that's for sure. Love the ribbon right there. I uh, don't know what that is there in the middle. It almost looks like number eight. Uh, that big one next to what I think is number eight, I don't know. Again, I don't know, it could be anything. That Laramar necklace is fantastic. Love the Laramar. And of course, they got lots of beads. But you know what, folks? I think we're going to call it a day. My ride is going to leave me if I hang out here any longer. I'm going to go check out with my big, my high rolling purchase. If you folks are ever in the area of Albuquerque, make sure to swing on by Mama's Minerals. Tell them that you saw the video. 
Is that whalebone? No. Uh, yeah. If you're in Albuquerque, you better come to Taos and say hi to me anyway, but... Thank you, Mama's Minerals, for your fantastic hospitality. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you not kicking out the weird or walking around with a camera in his hand. Look at that. Crystals. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Sprite loves crystals. $60 for that one. You see, Sprite, your investment is not going on. Appreciate. Sprite is the best crystal shopper I know I've ever met in my life. He finds the best crystals. I think crystals just like him. Uh, yeah, he, he gets some great stuff really affordably. Love me some Sprite. Anyway, folks, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Come on down to Mama's Minerals here in Albuquerque, New Mexico.